Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some okay, fun. Okay, well, here we are again. We've got another project, uh, and uh, this is a small piece of a much bigger project that I'm working on, but uh, I thought I'd bring you in for this one because it's going to be pretty, well, a little bit interesting. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's pull in, hit closer, and see what we got. <clears throat> Okay, well, a uh, month or two ago, uh, this guy gives me a call and says, Hey, I've got some spurs I want you to make for me. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can. I think I can do that. Uh, so he sends me this example spur. It's kind of rusty and beaten up and everything, but it tells me what what he wants. And uh, where we're at today, and, and I've made, uh, I can't remember how many I've made, maybe 10 of them. So uh, what, where we're at today is this little flap thing here. Now what happens is the leather straps to this and goes over the top of the boot to hold this spur in place. This thing needs to rotate fairly smoothly. Now I'm going to get... This is a straightened out version of that. We haven't bent it yet. Uh, and so we take this, and this goes into those two holes right there, right? And then that, uh, let's see if we can get it. This goes into the two holes. The problem is, is that if you press this down onto that, onto that spur, the arch here is going to uh, actually bend the spur itself, or the, you know, the shank itself. So uh, what I need to do, and it needs to be this close in order to stay inside of that groove, uh, because if it's outside of the groove, the this little flap can move one way or the other on this on this uh, little strap or this little piece of round stock here. So we have to flatten out the the arch here, get rid of the this radius. So here's what I've come up with. I think what I'm going to do is drill two holes down into this piece of 8620 and get them and go all the way through and then reduce a gap in between those with a with a piece of uh, or with a uh, bullnose bit that this will fit inside of there right and then from there we'll heat this up well of course we'll, we'll heat treat this because it's 8620 it's it'll it's heat treatable and then uh we'll heat this up and set it actually we'll set it in the old holes themselves then take the torch and heat it up real quick and get it red hot and then put it in the press boom hit it and and press it down and hopefully that'll square up this edge and also at the same time make this part because this is somewhat arched which means that this thing doesn't move freely well it moves freely right there but once you get it over here it it's a struggle so we're going to do that and uh that's the job today so follow along we're going to have some fun well, this almost never happens. Uh, yesterday afternoon, UPS drives down the driveway and drops off this package. And I look at it and I go, I didn't order anything. What the hell is it? You know, and sometimes, uh, sometimes I'm a bit forgetful. Uh, and uh, I'll order something and, you know, it'll, a couple of weeks later it'll show up and I have no idea what it is. So it's kind of like Christmas. You know, I get this little package in the mail. I, it's a total surprise, and I open it up, and it's like, oh wow! 
you know, and there's a certain amount of letdown, of course, because I ordered it and I remember now. But uh, this one I didn't order. And it came from Valley Designs in Bismarck, North Dakota. And I'm thinking, what the hell is it? So I open it up and I pull out this uh, sheet of paper and it says, um, it's telling me what I'm supposed to do with this thing before I actually get to opening it up. But, uh, and I open it up and pull out one of these. And I'm like, yeah, what the hell is that? And it's, I'm not sure what it is until I read about it. And then I realize it goes to, and I'm going to go get one. Hang on a sec. Oh, I don't know, uh, a month or so ago, uh, one of my viewers uh, comments on my little Hershey syrup cans. And, you know, I didn't even think about it because I did, never bought these cans. Uh, they were I inherited them from a, a machinist buddy of mine he had um, tools sticking in the cans he must have had 30 of these that he gathered over the years and so this viewer says um, oh man I love those cans so I told him I said well send me your address I'll send you one so I sent him one and he said okay well uh, since you sent me one, uh, I'm going to make these little caps for the cans so that you can, um, you know, and uh, he did that on his 3D printer and I think they came out pretty cool. <laughs> so I think I got, if there was two in that package and then I've got about six or eight of them, which is kind of cool. And, uh, and we'll set those aside and uh, and as I said this never happens I never get viewer gifts uh, but once in a while I'll get one so now I pull out the, the message from him and the guy's name is Jeff Valley Designs North Dakota oh yeah and I sent him a, a Biker Bob book too he says, thanks again for the Biker Bob book and the Hershey's can. Here are a few things in exchange. <clears throat> I designed these funnels on a 3D printer. Uh, I'm not sure how they'll hold up to your cutting oil, so I guess it's an experiment. They should fit the top of your can. One is printed slightly thicker than the other. It's more lumpy for some, and more lumpy for some reason. Well, actually, I kind of like the lumpy. I can feel it on one side, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, the other things are a BXA dial indicator holder. Hmm. Well, let me look. Have a look at that. Oh, I see. It is a dial indicator holder. Oh yeah, I see. Interesting. And it fits on the V's of a way. Hopefully I've got a way that's got the right size to it. That's kind of cool. 3D printed. And I'll just go on with the note. Uh, I've been uh, using some of my some on my lathes. They work okay. But they're a little on the soft side. I might design something similar but stronger or make one from aluminum. They mount with flat side up. I guess you can 3D print aluminum these days too, of course. Lastly, I thought you needed one of our signs. Hopefully the power is on so you can enjoy it. I really enjoy all your videos and my wife likes to listen to your story time videos. That's kind of cool. From Jeff at Valley Design in North North Dakota. Or, yeah, North Dakota. So, 
we're going to pull out this. I'm not sure what this part is. Off on switch. Hey, there's our newest member of the family, our barn cat. Sita. Huh, Sita? Okay, uh, we've got some kind of plug deal happening here. Let's, uh, I mean, this is real exciting for me. <laughs> I never get gifts. <laughs> Let's see, can we plug it into an extension? Yes. Oh, we got some lights. Is there more? There is. Oh man, look at that. Very cool. <clears throat> oh, ho, ho. <laughs> hey, is that the coolest or what? <clears throat> wow. Nice. Well, I don't get many gifts, but when I get them, they're cool ass gifts. That is very cool. Now, the question is, is where to put it? Because I have room for nothing. Oh, I see. Maybe that shelf right there. Okay, check it out. Uh, you know, it's just the regular panel as always, and boom! <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> I just love that. So, uh, hey, Nick Collier Machine Works. Oh, yeah, let me give you the address of this guy because, uh, you know, you might uh, be interested in having him make you one of these because this is about as cool as it gets. Um, and there's his information. Uh, American made. God damn it. Okay. This is Nick Collier machine works check it out and I know it's not really necessary but uh, we're gonna find center for both of these and uh, let's get started There's center. Now, <clears throat> get our drill bit in there. And that's a three or yeah, three sixteenths drill bit and if we're on dead center right now almost hang on there's center then uh, this wants to be well actually let's not do it with that <coughs> Let's do it with one of the actual spurs. We'll go outside to outside. So we're looking at one two hundred and seventy five. One two seven five. Uh, 
that's outside to outside. Uh, one two seventy five minus um, one eighty seven. No, one eighty five. Let's just round it up. Minus point one eighty five. 1090. That's our total width, so divide that by 2. It'd be 545. Okay. 545. That looks about right. Let's uh, just put a little dimple in there and see what, see what we got. And then we go to 545 on the other side. And, well, we can just put our piece up here. And that looks pretty good. All right, I think we can just drill that. We got that part. Now we take the whole thing apart and do it again. Well, not do this exact thing again, but we're going to uh, create a web in between those two. And we'll come back for that. Okay, so we've got ourselves a 3 16th bit. We're going to come back into center. Oops. Let's take it all the way down. And then... 545 and then half a 3 sixteenths <coughs> 1 8 7 5 93 and a half okay Ninety three and a half So we want to come up ninety three One two three and a half And that should have us where we want to be now we'll just travel across And we should have Okay, that's pretty much has what we want. Let's see if this thing is going to fit in there. I'm sure it is.
I'm guessing that we just tap it a little bit and it'll adjust. Okay, let's try one side. Yeah, one side goes in nicely. The other side goes in nicely. So all we have to do is get this thing to Still too big. There we go. Okay, that's going to go down. So, now getting it back out could be a problem. Well, we got the shape. That's all we really need at the moment. I'm thinking maybe we could make those holes just a little bit bigger it's, I don't think it's gonna bother anything just a smidge let me go over and see if I got a drill bit that'll go a little bit bigger and I'll be back. all right well we drilled it a couple of sizes bigger just to get this thing to slide in and out fairly easily and it's still a bit of a fight but it does go in and uh, that's pretty much all we need now what we need is something is the same thing except with a uh, half round up here so I don't end up crushing this. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Uh, I'm going to go over my metal bin, my exotic metal bin, and uh, see what we got. I'll take you over there. All right, you see my stash here. All of this is uh, exotic metals. You can see uh, 4140 in there. Uh, and I mark them uh, with ink or with uh, paint just to uh, keep it from wearing off. And sometimes uh, I'll mark it by stamping the numbers into it. Can you see that? Yeah. So, uh, and I, I found a piece here. It's, this is 4140. I think this piece came from the triple clamps that I did, oh, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. And I think what we can do is flatten that, put our groove in there, and then the, uh, the press, you know, flatten this out a little bit. And the press would press down in the center here, and, uh, and then it could rock and work its way down. Of course the press you know it'll do it in two seconds or <laughs> a half a second but uh, let's uh, take this back to the mill and see what okay we got. this piece is a little bit uh, wider just a little bit and then of course a little bit wider this way too so I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and take off these corners flatten that out and uh, then we'll have uh, um, something to work from and I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and just mark these approximately where I want it. Let's take this beast out. That looks pretty good. Yep. All right. Uh, we'll do the top first. Oops. We got to put a get rid of that drill head and we're going to come in with a good size mill bit OK, 
Okay. Crank that up. Well, that grabbed a little fast, huh? <laughs> okay. As long as it didn't break nothing. corner is a bitch. I thought it was going to be a cakewalk. <clears throat> it to be but it's I think it's gonna be fine okay that looks pretty good so let's uh, deburr this Okay, we're going to take this bit out, we're going to put our bullnose bit back in, and we're going to bullnose a slot right across the top of this. that looks pretty good it's not exactly center but we don't really need it to be we just need it to sit on top of that now I left a little burr here accidentally so I think what I'm gonna do is just go over to the grinder and grind okay it while uh, while I had the camera off I went in and cut and threaded a rod so we could have a handle for this and I think a handle is important because all of this is going to be fairly warm when we start working with it. So, uh, we're sitting with a, a Q drill, which is the size for 3 eighths, and I'm going to get a little more centered.
Okay, we got it. We'll put the arm in, and the uh, next thing we're going to do is a little heat treating. We'll be back. Okay, so uh, we're going to use uh, this cherry red material. Uh, I got uh, a hit from that from uh, Keith Fenner uh, on one of his videos. So, uh, and this will be the first time I used it. So it says to uh, take and make my part cherry red, bring it over, and uh, get a bunch of uh, of this uh, material on the part you want to harden. So we're going to bring something over and see what we can do. Yeah, uh, uh, back, back, back. Okay, looking good. And then it says just put it back in and let it heat back up again. Well, we got one of them in there at least. And uh, yeah, you can see we got ourselves a new uh, resident in the barn, Sita. She's busy eating. So uh, yeah, our old, our old cat, uh, you know, went on to a, the other life. So uh, hopefully we got a new one here and hopefully she's a mouser so we can get rid of some of the rats around here but yeah whatever it's a barn okay so we're back to this but we've got to let that heat up a bit more okay we're all set up here uh i did heat finish heat treating and cleaning it up off camera so uh now we're ready to try our first one we'll go right there and we're going to heat the wire up, or the round stock, because it's pretty big. looks pretty good now all we need to do is punch out the uh, back side we're set <clears throat> okay so uh, just take a a punch Thing dropped right out. Let's see what it looks like. <clears throat> yeah, it did it. Look at that. Nice, nice sharp corners. Okay, let me answer that phone. 